Welcome to the Step One of View Study Guide, and in this lesson, we learn about the urea cycle, transport of ammonia by alanine, and hyperammonemia. When amino acids are metabolized to enter into glucogenesis or ketogenesis, nitrogen is a byproduct. The body removes it via the urea cycle. In the mitochondria, the nitrogen waste and carbon dioxide combines with energy from 2 ATP into carbamoyl phosphate by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. The end product of the urea cycle is ornithine and it combines with carbamoyl phosphate into citrulline by ornithine transcarbamylase. Now, in the cytoplasm of the liver, aspartate is added and energy from ATP yields argininosuccinate by argininosuccinate synthetase. By the enzyme argininosuccinase, fumarate is expelled and arginine is left. Finally, water is added and using the enzyme arginase, urea and ornithine is created. The urea can then go to enter the kidney to be expelled and the ornithine can recombine with the carbamoyl phosphate to continue the cycle. Ordinarily, careless crappers are also frivolous about urination. The urea cycle only takes place in the liver, so the nitrogen byproduct formed in the muscles needs a route to get to the liver. It is done by being transported as alanine. The nitrogen from amino acids are put on the alpha-ketoglutarate to form glutamate. Glutamate and pyruvate from glycolysis combine to form alanine. Alanine is the intermediate that is used then to transport the nitrogen to the liver where it is deaminated by alpha-ketoglutarate to make glutamate, once again, and then enter the urea cycle. The pyruvate supply comes from the Cori cycle, and the alanine to pyruvate is called the Cahill cycle. Hyperammonemia is a condition in which there is too much ammonia in the blood. Causes include liver disease or enzyme deficiencies in the urea cycle. This means that the ammonia cannot be turned into urea to be excreted and continues to flow through the bloodstream. Alpha-ketoglutarate can accept one ammonia molecule becoming glutamate which can then become GABA by B6 or can accept yet another ammonia becoming glutamine. In hyperammonemia, glutamine levels become much higher than glutamate, GABA, and alpha-ketoglutarate. The central nervous system will experience toxicity because the glutamine levels will increase, which will therefore increase the osmotic pressure. This osmotic pressure can inhibit the TCA cycle. Patients with hyperammonemia present with the cerebral edema, blurred vision, vomiting, somnolescence or the great desire for sleep, slurred speech, and asterixics or a flapping tremor. Treatment of hyperammonemia includes limiting the protein intake Administration of lactulose. Lactulose will acidify the intestine, turning the free ammonia in the gut into ammonium ion, which can't be absorbed. There are bacteria in the gut that produce ammonia. Antibiotics, rifazamin, and the neomycin will reduce the amount of these bacteria, reducing ammonia production. Further, ammonia is captured and turned into glycine and glutamine. To excrete glycine, it can react with benzoate which produces a product which can be excreted by the kidney, bypassing the urea cycle. As well, phenyl acetate reacts with glutamine to form a product that can also be excreted renally, also bypassing the urea cycle. That's all for this lesson, Step 1 of You. We'll see you in the next video.